Oh gosh, look at that. If you've been studying your NASM overhead squat, you should know this as knee valgus. You might even know the overactive adductors, the underactive abductors, but what do you actually do with it? In this video, we're gonna go through our three-step process to address knee valgus so you can get clients moving better in the gym. We've got Coach Louise here with us to demo some of what we're looking for and trying to make some improvements with those knees caving in. But before we dive right into our three-step process of how to address knee valgus, if it's a real concern, we want to make sure we're not assuming anything, right? Because what happens? I make an ass out of you and out of me by saying automatically it must be a movement impairment. This person's broken because the knees cave in when it could be a couple of other things. So my first go-to thing in problem solving this is going to say, hey, let's step away from just the toes forward position and let's just try getting into what might feel like a normal squatting position. 10 to 15 degrees toes out, probably more natural for Louise. So give me a couple more squats, Louise. And if just by doing that in the moment, I see the knee valgus disappear, it's gonna be something for me, Coach Joe Drake, as a trainer, I'm a lot less concerned about, right? It still might be something I look for once we get into some of our single leg positions with the knee caving in, but I'm gonna say, okay, in the squat, maybe it's not a big issue because I'm probably not squatting in that position anyways. If I still see it here, again, good opportunity to problem solve, good opportunity to add value in a first session with your client. So what I would then do is say, okay, cool, maybe just another cue. So as you go down, Louise, now I want you to think about screwing your feet into the ground and driving your knees out. Let's try that again. And again, watching and seeing, do we see some improvements? Obviously, I'm a magic coach, and so it's gotten to be perfect here. And she's gonna hold this for us because I like making her struggle a little bit in the video. And let's say, okay, cool, that still didn't work. Well, we still have some other tools we can play with. Maybe we try an external cue. Push my hands apart, harder, harder, harder. Okay, that part was just for fun, but come up to the top. I just wanna give you guys that thought process and idea that in the moment as we're doing assessments, it's okay to problem solve because it may be a little bit less that there's a movement impairment or there's an imbalance and it might just be they don't know how to squat. They don't know what those muscles should feel like and if I can give them one simple cue and then they can replicate it, for me then we're on the right track. So unfortunately, if that did not solve your problems, then we move into our three-step process. And step one of this is mobilize. And this should have to do a little bit more with what you might know as the overactive areas of the body, which if we're talking about knee valgus, the most common, probably the most probable overactive area is gonna be the adductor complex, the inner thighs. And so in your mind, if you're going through the NSM material, we automatically think, okay, how do I gain flexibility? And I think flexibility might be the wrong term or the wrong way for us to think about it. I want you to think about gaining range of motion, getting access to more, because this is a really interesting area of the body where we may have tissue restriction, but oftentimes we also have brain control. Like your body doesn't trust you going there, right? As I do this awkward stretch side to side that no one ever does. So we could utilize a foam roller if we're looking at our flexibility chapters, self mild fascia release. I do find for a lot of people, this is a tough one to teach you guys over the internet as far as foam rolling the inner thighs. And also it can take quite a bit of time to get a good response. So for right now, boom, we're gonna throw the foam roller out and just talk more about the active range of motion. And I look at three potential solutions when it comes to gaining more mobility in the inner thigh, the adductor complex. The first is just some simple range of motion static and kind of some dynamic stretches. All right, and I have this little step up here because this is my favorite way to start people. I'm gonna have Coach Louise plant one leg on top so we can focus on one side at a time. Sometimes the, ch the challenge with going from the ground is it doesn't allow us to get a lot of length in this side because again, the ground gets in the way. So literally starting out, and I'm gonna have you come up here for me, Coach Louise, and just starting out, getting people more comfortable, trying to think about pulling yourself back and down to the right side. So we're getting this active stretch with the inner thigh and then coming back out. And you could do this, again, I just wanna give you guys ideas. You could do this from a slightly static standpoint where you're holding these for a little while, getting a more of a stretch. I like the way Coach Louise is doing it right now because I think it translates over to your squat a little bit better. Guess what we're getting on one side? A position that looks a little bit more like a squat. So hopefully the idea is that this is gonna translate well into trying to improve our position as we drop down because that's the reality. As we get into a deeper squat position, you need that range of motion in the adductors. And so this can be a very simple way to integrate it. And for some clients, you can pause for a second. I've got some, you know, some men who have a lot of restriction there. And uh, again, like I mentioned, when's the last time they've done the splits? Probably never, Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. But even using other tools to help people get into, because you're gonna find some clients, you can demo that for us, 
is uh, some clients, this is a really tough position to get them into. So don't be afraid to start easy as far as regressions here. And there's a lot of ways we can continue to progress this. Over time, obviously this could become an exercise that we're adding load to, but I like the idea that it gets us into somewhat of a deep squat position here while we're getting that active stretch on the opposite side. And in addition to gaining range of motion, I'm gonna put it here in the mobilize section, not our activate or our integrate, but also just thinking about the isometric strength in those AD ductors, right? Because again, a lot of this is being controlled by the brain. So we can make sure we're building some isometric strength in the adductors in a little bit. You can see I have the foot elevated up here on a bench. We're not going full Copenhagen plank, if you guys might be familiar with those, because that is a ton on the adductors. We still have Louise pushing down through this bottom knee, so she's getting a little bit of AD ductor activity here, while she's also getting AD ductors, and we get a little bonus obliques here as well, but this can be a great way just to get the body more comfortable with creating some isometric tension in that area. And the last piece here of mobilizing, because I want you guys to think about mobility as strength through range of motion, and this is one of my favorites when it comes to the inner thighs, the AD ductors, getting them long and strong, if that's really a thing. But either way, I'm gonna have Coach Louise grab these dumbbells. You can see she's seated on a bench. We have a nice wide stance, and I want you guys to think RDL. She's gonna push her hips back, allow those dumbbells just to bring her down, and she's not gonna compromise that low back position. Coming right back up by pushing her feet through the ground and then nice and slow back down. You wanna think of it, it should feel like a stretch, but this is where we really start to combine stretching and strengthening. We're getting her stronger. You can see that's a pretty deep, wide position, which again, hopefully once we get to our next stages, is gonna transfer over to a better squat position. So once we've addressed step one, mobilize, which you really only need to focus on maybe doing one of those things in any given session, we're gonna move on to step two, and that is gonna be activate. And when I say activate, I want you to think more specifically like isolated activation, especially of the muscles that might be underactive, which knee valgus, right? We saw that really, really horrible knee valgus earlier. Most common is gonna be glute medius. Glute medius, right? There are some other potentials, but I'm telling you guys, if there are options on the exam, go with the glute medius and just know it's really more about isometric control, all right? So if it is about isometric control, you might wanna think about that when it comes to the activation method. So I have Louise in a mini band, booty band, glute band, whatever you wanna call it. All right, mostly because I know she loves these. And this is a very common strategy when we look at, okay, Joe, I see the knees caving in. Well, let's just throw a band on them, all right? It absolutely can be a good use, but I would actually save that to this third step when it comes to integration, because oftentimes I think we can over-rely upon that. Either way, this is a good external cue. External cue, right? We have the band on. So as we come down, I no longer have to be here pushing. She automatically kind of gets this cue to drive the knees out. Go ahead and give me a rep or two, just to struggle a little demo for him. And obviously she's working against that. So it can be a good external cue, but I think first off, we don't wanna rely upon this all the time. I wanna to get to a point where it becomes more automatic. And I think we've got some other strategies that we can do so. So I'm gonna save you a little bit. Let's throw that bad boy off. And let's actually come back down. And I say lateral plank position, because again, we're thinking isometric control, right? This does take the lower half of the leg out of the picture, but at least gets us training isometrics at our glute medius, right? This whole lateral subsystem of the body for a lot of people is undertrained. And I'm not gonna say this alone is gonna solve the problem for everybody, but it is a really great place to start. And I like the bent knee position because it's easier for people to focus on really driving through that bottom knee and getting that isometric activity. Obviously over time, we can play with a lot of other variations. We can lift this leg up off the ground. So I also like the lateral plank because it's an easy one to throw in for clients for a long time without them getting bored and you have a lot of opportunities for progression. All right, but let's say, cool, she's mastered that piece. Let's have you step back up for me for a second. When it comes to like isolated activation, if you are gonna utilize the bands, rather than just utilize them for the squat, which I would say kind of rolls more into phase three of integration of the exercise and the movement, what I'm gonna have Coach Louise do, or I'll just do it for her because I'm a nice guy, is thinking about isolated activation. If I drop down, here's a good example for you guys, into a small lunge or even quarter squat type position, and then from there, small steps out to the right side. I like certain moves like this a little bit better because we're getting isometric activity with, what's this called? Hip flexion, knee flexion, here's your guys' anatomy. We're getting isometric activity in those positions 
while we're still getting a little bit of like closed and open on the opposite side. So going with moves like that force us to train that isometric position while we're building some strength in those muscles and end up being better options for phase two of activation. Phase three we call integration. And just like it sounds, now what we wanna do is we wanna integrate some of the abductor especially, right? Some of that abductor isometric activity in positions that might mimic the squat. Not everything you do in this process, right, of mobilizing, activating, integrating, has to look just like a squat, but in my mind, usually where you're gonna see most of that valgus knee come in is it's gonna be in deeper positions, right? Because it's harder to stabilize, we have more restriction in the adductors as we drop down. So when you think about these, I'm gonna give you a couple examples, but other things that you could do, you just wanna make sure, is this gonna translate over more so to the squat? So you guys can see right now I have an NT loop on Louise. You could utilize the mini bands like we had before, right? This could now maybe be an appropriate time to integrate it into more of a squatting pattern. I like the NT loops, just easy to adjust. And really because we're getting that resistance here, not only allows us to push the knees out, but also helps people keep a little bit more upright as well. So just go through a couple squats for us, nice and slow. Slow, dropping down, drive out, hold at the bottom for a second, and then coming right back to the top. We'll go two more of those. And like I mentioned, again, if we're trying to improve the way someone moves, maybe she's gonna be doing some goblet squatting in our workout, and I wanna make sure we're really solidifying and firing up some of that isometric activity in those abductors. Well, I might do one or two rounds in our warm up, right, when it comes to this integrated exercise, and then take the band away and go right into our squatting when it comes to the actual workout afterwards. Cool. So the other thing you can do, pause for a second, is just get people into more split stances, all right? Not only because this knee valgus will show up, right, but also because the body has to stabilize here. We can get away with some things sometimes, and even with weights, our body hides stuff when it comes to squatting. But if I just start to throw somebody in these integrated exercises into more lunge patterns, think split squats, lunges, step up, step downs, that alone can be a great way to try to integrate in what we're looking for, which is control from the hip, the knee, the foot. All right, so I'll show you guys another example with the NT loop. We're gonna keep just this leg in. I'm gonna move it up more around the thigh. And you don't have to go out far for this one. But what Louise is gonna do is get set up into a lunge position. And now she's got, again, an external cue from the band that's trying to pull her in. So this can be a great way to fire up those AB duckers, drop down low, driving that knee out nice and slow, and then coming right back up to the top. And again, as you start this out with people, you think about that stabilization phase, right? The below the iceberg stuff. Make sure we're going slow on these, we're adding in these isometrics. The goal is movement quality, and you wanna give the body time to try to solidify these positions, so hopefully it translates over into those bigger lifts that we're gonna go into. And the last one I'll show you guys, she's such a good lunge model, right? Perfect technique, is also step down. This is maybe a little bit of a jump in the progression, but if you have some more advanced clients, working on control down, which again is much harder now with just this single leg. And we don't have any external cues, so this is a really great test of like, are we developing the internal mechanisms to better stabilize with the glute medius? And so all I'm gonna have Coach Louise do is come to the top. I'm less worried about the step up, I'm more concerned about the control down. And what we're looking for is, you know, the knee wobble, do we see it cave in? Can I try to keep it right over the top of that foot? light on that back foot and right back up. So let's give one or two reps here. And this is great too, because what you'll find is that you may not have picked up on the asymmetry, right? The difference of one side versus the other as much in the squat because of our bilateral position. But I like getting unilateral because now we can see maybe she's struggling a little bit more with one side and it really allows us to force, you know, to, to, to isolate that. And we can see nice and slow, harder for our females because of Q angle real focus and control on the knee and foot. Nice job there, coach. Hopefully this video and this process gives you a little bit more confidence in how to approach these things when it comes to the overhead squat. You find the knee valgus, you know the underactive and overactive. Well, hopefully now you have a process to do something about it. Think about, mobilize, what areas do I need to improve range of motion in? Activate, what are the muscles, especially those underactive muscles that I need to get activated before I get into my workout? And then integrate. How do I try to translate some of that activation into positions that are gonna translate over better into things like the squat or pushing and pulling, the exercises you're trying to improve. And I promise you, if you do so, you're gonna feel a lot better about your coaching and training and clients are gonna start moving better in the gym.